Okay, um, uh, last lightning display, then it's lunchtime. Um, uh, Julius asked me just to give you an update on Verilator, um, because I commercially do work maintaining Verilator for um, customers. Um, and so this is just a, a very quick update. Uh, the big thing that's happened in the last year or so is system Verilog support. Um, and we've worked closely with Wilson Schneider, who's the guy who basically owns Verilator. Um, and these are the features that you get. System Verilog, so System Verilog 2012 standard is out. Interestingly, it's now one of the free IEEE standards. So you can actually go and get the System Verilog 2012 standard for free from the IEEE. Um, which having paid several hundred pounds for the 2009 standard, we didn't cross it. Um, what we've got there, this is the stuff that is either there or is going to be there very shortly. So interfaces are there, they should work for more ports and functions. Packages are there, packed structs and unions are there. Unpacked structs are not going to be there because they're not really synthesizable. Um, but what we're going to put in there is an option that says, if you see an unpacked struct, turn it into a packed struct and then do it. Um, hierarchical references are a big thing in System Verilog. Those now sh should work with multi-dimensional arrays. All these extra little things, unique, unique, zero priority, if case X and case, well, case X and case N sort of there already, always com, always if and so forth, they're all in there. Um, a lot of these things have been put in, there are tests for them. If they don't work, please file a bug on the Verilator uh, website. Um, all the extra operators, which are C-type operators, should all be in there. Inside is not yet done, it's one of my list of things to do. Logic, bit and const types are there. Type defs are there, and they include enumerated types, though I think there may be some bugs in that, and I still have to work on that. And there are some extensions to generate, which has a rather richer semantics in System Verilog than it does in Verilog 2001. Uh, so that's basically what's there in System Verilog support. Um, the, the objective is to have basically a reference implementation for synthesizable System Verilog. Um, it's certainly ahead of the commercial tools. So if you want cycle accurate models from System Verilog, you have no option but to use open source. Other stuff, DPI support is much better, and the old Verilator public to expose variables is now really not needed because there's good DPI support, and that's the better way of doing it. Um, working with uh, Jizu from Atmel, I've put in some improvements to gated clock handling. So gated clocks, and in particular gated clocks that are generated from delayed assignments, which is perhaps a little weird to do, actually gets that right. Um, and the consequence of that is actually better performance as well. Um, interestingly, I haven't been conscious of working explicitly on improved performance, but I have had some reports from customers using this on a wide range of designs that performance seems to have got up by a factor of about four since 2011 on a particular set of designs. That's very good. One of that's come from a, an optimization called DGU, which appeared a few months ago initially experimentally, now it's part of the main distribu distribution, and that gets rid of some duplicate um, handling of signals, um, which is a big cause of performance improvement. What I'm working on at the moment, at the heart of um, Verilator is its ordering, where it takes all the assignments of all the different sorts and tries to work out a full ordering of them, so you can do them one after the other without having to loop to get them to settle. Um, You'll be familiar if you ever use Verilator to the unopt flat warning. And the unopt flat warning means I had to put a loop in here because I couldn't find an ordering that would settle. Um, that's a big performance hit. If you fit uh, the standard original OR1K implementation, certainly had that. And in fact, that's the biggest single performance improvement you do is with modifying the Verilator to get rid of that. That typically occurs when you have. Um, because Verilator works with whole registers, you can have an apparent loop in a combinatorial piece of code, which isn't really a loop, it's that you're using different bits in the same register. And if you look at the register, there appears to be a loop, but if you split the register into two, they're actually two distinct things. So the trick with unlock flat... Yeah. So 
Is that only for registered, not wires? I think uh, 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 I think you can probably get it with wires as well. Because I had a problem that I got an unlocked flat uh, if I did a always uh, star and uh, did a mux like that. Yeah. But it went away if I did a wire and a sign and uh, like that kind of. Ah, oh, yeah, but. It, but if that allowed it to break out the fact that it could actually see what the sub loops were, it might well have got that right. Yeah. Um, so it's it's basically where you get implicit loops in reg in vectors, whether they're registers or wires. Yeah, okay. Um, you can, I believe, you can get unlocked flat in other circumstances, but I've never because seen. Because the the path wasn't like a loop; it it just got it wrong yeah. in that case. So V three order, I have been looking working on that for over a year. It is at the heart of Verilator. I still don't really understand how it works. Um, I got lucky when I fixed the improved in gating clocks. I still don't really quite understand why that worked. Um, uh, but um, so anyone who wants to get involved with Verilator, it's an open source project, feel free. Um, but it is used, it was used on Epiphany, um, and it was used to develop the tool chain for Epiphany pre silicon. And that meant the tool chain could find bugs in the silicon. It's been used on open risk to test the compiler and find bugs in the silicon or the or the RTL. It's um, supported by Orbs of version three. It's supported by Orbs of version three, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a powerful tool. Any questions? Uh, how how active is the development of it, aside from yourself? Is how active is Wilson Snyder? Oh, very, very, okay. very active indeed, and he works as a partly for me as a subcontractor. Oh, cool. right. um, but no, he's still as active as ever. Um, I, it's part of my day job as an engineer, as opposed to a manager, that, that I work on this. There is certainly a large computer. Uh, Rich Porter, who used to run um, Art of Silicon down in Bristol, he's an active contributor. Uh, there's a number of other active contributors. Uh, Jizu from Atmel contributes as well. But the more the merrier. Thank you. That was my five minutes. Enjoy.